First, it was Hoka One One, then it was Hoka One One, then it was Hoka One One again, and now it's just Hoka. This is the new Hoka Rincon 3. It's everything I'd hoped for in the latest of the Rincon lineage, continuing on the tradition of building a low profile, cushioned, and lightweight road trainer. While the new Rincon may look the same as the second version, there are a handful of hearty updates that contribute to an overall improved shoe. A redesigned sandwich mesh upper allows for improved breathability, complemented by a new, lighter and thinner tongue, a thinner heel loop, and reinforced lace holes. The squishy midsole is very similar, though feels maybe a little softer underfoot, but the addition of more outsole squares is a much needed improvement. Overall, the new Rincon 3 keeps what worked in the previous two versions and improves upon them ever so slightly. But with a saturated market for cushioned road trainers and questionable durability, does the Hoka Rincon 3 hold up? Let's find out! What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Now before we dive in, if you're a regular on the channel, you might have noticed that the background has changed a little bit. That's because we're making some improvements to Studio 4.0, 4.5, 6. I, I don't even know what version we're in now, but uh, I am excited that everything behind me is gonna continue to evolve and change and get better. Been doing this for 10 years, I thought it was about time to spice it up a little bit. Today, we're gonna be talking about a new shoe from Hoka, just Hoka, no One One, no One One. Apparently they've just gotten rid of that all together to make it simple, which is smart. The Hoka Rincon 3, a very exciting shoe that I've been wanting to talk about for some time. I just wanted to make sure I put the right miles in it. I have done so. Let's get started. Now, before I get into the review of today's shoe, I do have to point out that these were provided for review by Running Warehouse. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative about the shoe. I am not financially compensated for anything I do or say in this review and all opinions are my own. You're the first to see it. No one has to approve this review or anything like that. So uh, with that said, it's time to start talking about the Rincon 3. As always, I like to talk about the things I like and dislike about every single product on this channel, starting as always with the things that I like. Let's do this. First, the cushioning. It is super soft uh, and extremely lightweight. It actually is very similar to the second version of the Rincon's midsole, but I do say it has a bit more squish underfoot. Just literally wearing these on two different feet and kind of going for a run you'll notice that you have a bit more give in the midsole here, whether they redesigned it, changed the durometer. It is a great midsole that is extremely comfortable and manages to keep the weight down, the resilience strong, the responsiveness there for those who need it. And ultimately, the Rincon 3 feels very similar to the original Clifton, a shoe that I reviewed many, many years ago and have probably talked about more on this channel than any other shoe, just as sort of a model that I like to reference quite frequently. The Rincon 3, Feels very similar to that shoe. That is a good thing. Really happy with the cushioning in the shoe. It doesn't try to do too much. It does give you everything that you need. It does quite well. Weight. So the shoe continues the tradition of being cushioned yet lightweight. Hoka claims it's one of the best in the business as far as that ratio. Coming in in my size, size 11, it is 233 grams or 8.2 ounces. That is 10 grams lighter than version two, which puts it even lighter than version one, because version two got a little bit heavier than version one. Uh, that is excellent. For a shoe that provides Hoka level cushioning, it does a great job of keeping the weight down. They have some magic formula that keeps this midsole super springy and lightweight. It's great, it's light. Those first two likes certainly go hand in hand. Improved. Now, if you remember my review of the Rincon 2, uh, one of the things I liked about it was that it was very similar to version one. It was the same. This is not only the same, but improved. And that's all you can really ask for in a new version of a shoe. So uh, I'm talking about the breathability of the upper is improved over version two. I don't think it's nearly as good as version one, but I do think it is a step in the right direction. I love just this little heel grab here. That over what you get from version two or version one, a uh, much bigger webbing strap, saves weight, easy to grab, does the job that it's supposed to do. Uh, there's just a lot of improvements, including one of my more favored updates, and that is the addition of some outsole potting. Compared to version two, there's just a little bit more outsole on version three. It is enough and it is located in places that are higher wear, or higher contact. Ultimately, what that does is contributes to a higher sense of durability, which is good. It's not a lot of outsole, just very subtle updates and changes um, in the right places. And it's that focus to detail and improvements of this new version that really do help it stand out from the previous version and continue to make it a shoe that I enjoy. That being said, it's not all pumpkin spice lattes and Halloween decorations that go boo. There are a couple of things that I dislike 
about the Rincon 3. Let's get to those now. First is one of those new design elements that they implemented in 3, and that is the redesigned tongue. Uh, I mentioned it's thinner. It doesn't have nearly as much cushion as the second version, which saves on weight. Yes, it has some benefits to being thinner and a little bit more out of the way, but it's new asymmetrical design and lower profile, thinner profile, kind of allow the tongue to slip down a little too far. Some of these laces along the top two lace holes begin to go across your sock line as opposed to over the top of the tongue. That can be a problem. I think a lot of people uh, will probably be able to ignore that fact. They'll fit fine, they'll feel fine. But for me, I did notice on days where I really needed to sort of lace the shoe down or I was going for really long runs, there is added pressure here along the top of the foot up towards the top of the tongue. There's something to be said about having a little extra protection that the tongue provides. Here, you just don't get a lot of that. And really my biggest dislike is a carryover from version one and two, and that is the shoe's overall durability. I do wanna say that I put this shoe through the ringer. I probably have 80 to 85 miles in this shoe, 20 of which on one run, I decided to run a full-fledged trail run in this shoe, up mountains, down slopes and everything. Maybe a total of two miles on actual concrete or asphalt. It was mostly gravel, dirt, technical trails. It was a choice I made on purpose because I wanted to really put this through the ultimate test. Not that anyone would be running trails in this shoe, I just needed to see, could the durability hold up? You'll notice that there's no holes in the upper. There's no rubber outsole peeling off of the midsole or anything like that. In that case, I'm actually pretty impressed with the overall durability. It comes down to how much this shoe's dynamics changed as a result of that long run and many of the long runs that I did in the shoe. It doesn't feel quite as squishy. It doesn't feel quite as resilient. It feels like I lived a lot of life in this shoe. So while it's not at the end of its life cycle, I'll certainly be able to get more miles out of it it feels like I really pushed it. And of course I did on purpose. Where the midsole is exposed is really breaking down. Where the upper uh, gets a lot more stretch is certainly stretched out. The squish of the shoe is gone. The responsiveness of the shoe is gone. Overall, the durability is a concern. I did certainly put this shoe through its paces as I'm talking through this as a dislike. Maybe the durability isn't as bad as I thought and perhaps it's holding up better just with the amount that I have thrown at it. I'll let you be the judge of that regardless. I would like this shoe to last forever. I just think you're gonna probably be going through pairs quicker and sooner than you would hope. That is it for dislikes. I do like to get to the breakdown where I get to analyze five different criteria that will help you determine whether or not this shoe is a fit. We talk about build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look, starting with build quality. Um, just what I mentioned there, the durability of the shoe. You're gonna lose the squishiness, you're gonna lose the responsiveness of this midsole probably first before the shoe actually begins to break down. So overall build quality, I think the materials they are using are good, the upper is good, it's an improvement over two. It's that midsole that I like, but it's just gonna sort of dissipate all those likes in a quicker amount of time. Comfort, the shoe soars as far as cushion to weight ratio. It is an extremely comfortable shoe. Right out of the box, even now, it's just a bit different uh, feeling than right out of the box, but it's still comfortable. You know, it has a little bit of life left. I, I just really enjoy this shoe. It continues to be one of my favorite road trainers. Fit, it is gonna fit a bit more narrow. You'll just notice right out of the box, the shoe doesn't have a super wide platform. You're gonna need to dial in the fit. Uh, it is slightly accommodating upper, probably nowhere close to like a Clifton. Not designed exactly the same. I fit fine in my size, size 11, uh, but some of you might feel that the shoe is just a little too narrow. Price, at $115, the shoe is actually a pretty affordable shoe at the lower end of the price point, especially when it comes to Hoka shoes. So for me, that's a thumbs up, 115 is pretty damn good. And finally, looks. I'd say this is not the best color that they have for the Rincon 3. They have a lot of really good looking colors, let's be honest. Hoka's sort of on this uh, trend right now where they're popping really bright colors. They're calling the, some lines unicorn colors, stuff like that. They're a lot of fun. They're having a lot of fun with their design. This is probably the more subtle. It's not my favorite. It's not the boldest, but they have options for you. Bringing us to our conclusion. The Rincon 3 is my favorite Rincon yet. It is a fantastic daily trainer when you're looking to add long miles, short miles, you just need one shoe to sort of do it all. Uh, I really put it through its paces, the different types of trails and, and conditions that I ran in, certainly put this shoe through the ringer. I just really wanted to do that and it held up better than I could have imagined. While I think its biggest selling point is its cushion to weight ratio, it's a lightweight shoe, it's got cushioning. I think that cushioning 
does dissipate over time. Again, I really stress tested this stuff and uh, I do say that's probably its Achilles heel. It won't have the snap or speed of a plated shoe. It won't feel quite as resilient or responsive as something like the Clifton, but it has provided me with plenty of miles of endless joy and continues to be one of my favorite road trainers. Uh, I tend to grab it when I'm heading out the door and I don't really wanna think about how long, how far, or how fast. Price is good, the looks are good. Damn, it's a good shoe. Which brings us to our final criteria. Is the Hoka Rincon 3 a buy, try, or a why? I'll make this really, really simple. It's a buy uh, at 115 bucks. You got all this performance. You might end up having to buy a couple of pairs. That's sort of the uh, caveat with something like the Rincon 3. I think many of you probably have expected that by this point. Regardless, it is a fun shoe, and I'm excited to hear what you think of the Rincon 3. Uh, in the comments of this video, let me know, have you run into the Rincon 3? Is it something that you're even considering, or have you tried the other two previous versions and what you think? If you want more information about the Rincon 3, or you wanna get a pair for yourself, all you gotta do is go to one of the links in the description. It takes you over to Running Warehouse. It's an affiliate link. It costs you nothing, but it does help the channel out. So consider that if you want to get your Rincon 3s through that platform. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks so much for tuning into today's review, my friends. Uh, you've got lots of different places you can follow us or support us, and we have this incredible community called the GR Crew, where you can uh, subscribe on Patreon at patreon.com slash the ginger runner. You get access to all this really cool behind the scenes stuff, including our daily live stream. We go live every single day. We talk about life and all sorts of fun stuff, including running. And we even talk about shoes quite often. Uh, so consider joining if you have not already. It's a great way to support and get some amazing perks on the back end that I know that you will truly enjoy. We hope you are getting out there training hard, racing harder, and parting the hardest I know I am. We'll see you guys next week.